Here we are given two different functions, or at least the graphs of these functions, and we're asked to sketch a graph of the derivative of these functions on the same set of axes. Now, the first thing to say about this is that it's not an exact science, right? We're not looking for an exact derivative graph. There's no way we could because we don't have actually values on the y-axis. So this is just supposed to be essentially a rough sketch of what this might look like. And there's an approach that we can use for this. And it has to do with finding the slope at certain points. Right? Remember that the derivative of a function is the slope of that function. So what you do is you look for certain points. Like here, I'm taking this point um, kind of on the right of, of the first curve here. This, this derivative, the slope here, we just want to note the slope, is, I don't know, it's about zero, or it's, it's a little bit above zero. So the point on the line down here is going to be about here. Right? See, we're just looking at the, at the slope of the tangent line at that point. Same thing over here on the left side. Let's take this point, and if I were to do the derivative here, well, it's close to zero, but it's a little bit above zero. The slope is slightly positive. Remember, slopes going up and to the right are positive, slopes going down and to the right are negative. This is going a little bit up and to the right, so it's going to be a little bit above zero, so something like that. So you want to anchor these kinds of examples. You want to anchor them with places where the derivative is kind of close to zero. That gives you a starting point, because now we have these two points. We just have to figure out what happens in the middle. Well, this is all pretty smooth. Notice that right about here, I don't know, this slope to me looks about like 1, right? A perfect diagonal slope, m equals 1, right? And if it's really steep like that, m is, m is high, okay, m large. <laughs> and if it's really going down like that, m is negative large. <laughs> Oops, large. You get the idea. The question is, where is 1 on this y-axis? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe one is about here, right? We're just getting a general idea of what this looks like. Okay, now I'm just gonna connect these dots. So I'm thinking this, the graph of the derivative looks something like this. You know, I don't know, there's f prime of x. Again, not an exact science, but just enough to show that we have a a basic understanding of what the graph of the derivative could look like. Let's look at the second example. There's a lot going on here. We have asymptotes galore, we have a discontinuity. So let's just use the same method. We start by looking at places where the graph, where the slope of the line might be about zero. Those are the anchor points just to get us started so we don't completely lose our minds with these kinds of questions. So I'm starting here at the left. Here it looks about like zero, but it's a little bit below. So m is about, I don't know, maybe negative 0.1. I don't know, it's, it's about zero, but it's a little bit below the uh, x-axis. And then down here, uh, okay, let's find another zero point. All right, over here on the right, okay, m is almost zero, but it's a little bit, oh, it's a little bit negative here. So negative 0.1 here as well. So let's see, so this is going to be something like maybe a, a point here for the derivative. And let's see, this middle point here, I would say right there, m probably equals zero. So we'll have a point right in here, right in the middle there. Okay, now we look at the um, kind of, ex let's, let's next go to the extreme points. So down here, Right, this point, m is, well, negative large. <laughs> so it's, some, it's a very big number down here because the slope is decreasing going down to infinity. So maybe we have a point, I don't know, way down here. So bizarrely, the, in this left quadrant down here, in that area there, the derivative essentially mimics the function itself. So that, that's mildly uh, interesting or infuriating, depending upon how you look at it. 
uh, let's see here. Um, here's another extreme point. So I'm looking at the slope up here. And here, it's m is um, negative large as well. So the derivative graph is going to be down here, because it's negative large. It's asymptotically going off to negative infinity. OK, and then up here again, on this piece, we have m is negative large. Again, so I'm going to bring a point down here. OK, so let's put all this together. And again, this isn't an exact science. We're just trying to get an idea of what this graph looks like. So in this right quadrant, or I don't know if quadrants, in this right, I guess, section here, we start out large negative. So I'm thinking we come up. Let's make that a little more. Maybe we come up like this. And then we're edging our way over towards zero, but we're going to be a little bit negative, so like that. OK, in the middle region, we have large going down here. OK, and then we come up like so and approach zero in the middle. OK, in, the, in this leftmost region, well, here it's kind of strange, but I'm just going to essentially follow the function that's already there. I don't know how they're related, if they're they're probably not in reality exactly on top of each other, but again, we're just doing the best we can because we don't have actual numbers, we're not computing anything. So I'm, I'm just going to model this as if it goes right on top of the function itself. And of course, we do have functions where the derivative of the function is the function itself, for instance, e to the x. So anything that looks exponential-ish will have that property where the derivative resembles the original function. OK, so here we go. The blue is the graph of the derivative. There's one small point that I want to point out here, right at this discontinuity. So let's clear out some space here. We actually need to say, to be perfectly honest, we need to say, we need to put an open circle there. OK, why is that? Well, there's a theorem that we'll talk more about in, in an upcoming video, but it goes like this. If a function is differentiable, then it is continuous at that point. But if a function is not continuous at a point, then it's not differentiable at a point. So because this function stops short right here and is not continuous at that point right at the origin, the graph of our derivative function can't be defined at that point because it's not differentiable at that point. If it's not differentiable at the point 0, 0, then the graph of the derivative cannot exist at that point. So we do need to leave an open circle right at that center point.